Welcome back, students. In the last lecture, we talked about models and views in the general sense. And we talked a little bit about the Qt Abstract Item View class, which is a base class for all the Qt widgets that can work with models. And we also talked a little bit more about the Qt Abstract Item Model class and some of its commonly used methods that are used in any of the model classes that descend from it. In this lecture, we're going to look in more detail at a specific model called the QFile system model and some of its helper classes. Like all data models, each item in the QFile system model can be accessed using the index method, which returns a Q model index that we can use to reference a specific item of data. In the queue file system model, we don't have to specify a row and a parent to use the index method. We can specify a file path and a column. So the column refers to things like the name of the file is in the first column. And then we also have things like the size of the file and the type of the file in other columns. And so this is really a more useful way of getting a Q model index that refers to a specific item of data in the model. And then if we have that Q model index, we can use it to get the file's name, the file's path, the size, the type, the last date that was modified, and things like that. We can also use it to create a new directory. In this case, the data item that the QModel index is referencing has to be a valid directory, and then you can make a subdirectory within it just by passing it the QModel index of the parent directory and the name of the directory that you want to make. And you can also remove a directory or remove a file by passing the QModel index of the file or directory that you want to remove to the appropriate method. We can also set some filters for the Q file system model, and we have two methods to do this. The set filters method allows you to filter out, for instance, maybe you just want to see uh, hidden files or files of a certain size or things like that. You can use set filters for that, and then there's also a method called set name filters that you can use to filter out files by the file name. And we have a file info method that takes the Q model index of a specific item and returns an instance of the Q file info class. And the Q file info class is used to access information about a file, as you might have guessed. For instance, we can get the file's base name, its birth time, that's the time that it, it was created. You can get the time that it was last accessed, the suffix, which is the extension, its parent directory, its owner, the permissions that have been granted to users for that file, and lots of other things. So you can dig in and get a lot of information about a specific file that goes further than some of these methods we have in the Q file system model that return more commonly used things like the size and type. And then we can also use it to check whether it's a directory, whether it's an executable file, whether it's an actual file. I guess if it's not a directory, it's going to be a file. Whether it's hidden, whether it's readable, whether it's writable. Also, whether it's a symlink or a reference to a file rather than an actual file itself. And so these methods all return true or false. So you can get a lot of information about a file using the QFileInfo class. There's also a QDirectory class which returns information about a specific directory, but it also has some static methods that can return information about your file system in general, such as its current path, the path to the home directory, the root path, a temporary file path, and you can also, if you have a path, you can convert it to using your file system's native separators. So for example, in most Unix-based systems, and that includes Mac OS, the separator between directories and the file's path is a forward slash, but in Windows, it's a backslash. And in Qt, all the methods will work with either one. However, if you're displaying a path to a user, 
you might want to convert it to the native separators first so you don't confuse them and, and end up displaying a path with backslashes on a Unix-based system. And again, these are all static methods, so you don't need an instance of a Q directory object. You can call these methods on QDIR directly. But you can also use QDIR to get an instance of a class that refers to a specific directory. And if you do that, you can get some information like the number of files that are in that directory, or whether the directory is empty, whether it's readable. You can create a new directory or rename a file and things like that. So this is the Q file system model. I think that this will all become a lot clearer when we start writing code. So if your head is spinning right now, don't worry too much. Just be patient. Let it spin around in your brain a little bit. And in the next lecture, we're going to jump into PyCharm and start writing some code that uses the Q file system model. And we'll see you then.